Hi class, today we're going to be looking at balancing equations. Now this part can be a little bit tough and so you may want to go back and listen to this a couple times or practice it quite a few times. Um, generally I see that students either get it right away or they take a lot of practice and then they get it. Either way it's something that um, you might just need to practice a lot before you really get it down. So. We have three main questions here. Number one, explain the purpose of balancing a chemical e reaction or chemical equation. Number two, what are coefficients? And number three, practice balancing an equation. There are plenty of sample problems on the PowerPoint or you can use some of the worksheets from class. And if you just feel like you want more practice, I have some extra worksheets that you can take just to practice them on your own. Okay, this section is on balancing equations. And so first we'll give the purpose, and the purpose is to show the conservation of mass. There's another kind of purpose to it in that we're looking at the amounts we need of each thing to go into the equation, and then the amounts of each thing that we get out of the equation. So it's kind of like baking a cake. If we know that there needs to be flour and baking soda and sugar and vanilla and eggs, but we don't know how much of each thing, we could just randomly throw them all into a pan and hope that they come out to be a cake that tastes good. This is just telling you basically how much or the amount you need to come up with the chemical reaction that we're asking to happen. The process is that we put these coefficients into the equation and that will help to balance both sides of the equation. These coefficients are numbers that basically tell us the amount of each thing that we need. So step one to balancing equations is to check the equation for balance by counting how many atoms you have on, of each element on each side of the equation. So we'll show you that here. Um, we have NaCl, sodium chloride, you don't even have to know what the things are, BeF2, NaF, and BeCl2. So this is how we're going to set up our equation to look at how many of each thing we have on each side of the equation. Our first element is Na, and we have one of those. We know there's one because there's no number here. If there were a number, we would put that number. But if we have no number, we assume that there's one. Chlorine, one. Beryllium, one. And fluorine, two. This two goes to that fluorine. On this side, Na is one. Fluorine is one. Beryllium is one and chlorine is 2. You can see that 2 here. Okay, so the key part here is that we are writing these couple things. We are writing these down, each element down on the left side. These are your reactant side and each of the elements from your product side. Notice that if we have sodium on one side, we have to have sodium on the other side. We can't all of a sudden create some new element over here that wasn't on the reactant side. It has to be on both sides. Now what we want to do is balance these equations. So notice fluorine is not balanced and chlorine is not balanced. So our goal is to try and balance those numbers out and have them equal on both sides. The reason they need to be equal is because of the law of conservation of mass. We cannot create or destroy mass. So you can't have all of a sudden created extra chlorine on the right side or you couldn't have destroyed some of the fluorine on the right side. We have to show that it's equal on both sides of the equation. So step two is going to be choosing coefficients that balance the equation. We cannot ever change the subscript. That is the formula. So we did subscripts last chapter where you make compounds and you guys did a really good job on that. And we cannot change those subscripts. Those come from the amount of that particular atom we need in order for that to be a happy atom or happy molecule. So coefficients are going to be put in front of the equation or in front of the element or the compound. And they are going to multiply by however many you already had. So here's an example. We want to balance chlorine. <coughs> Excuse me. Chlorine had two on the right side and only one on the left side. So we need to balance that. Now there's a couple rules. We can never put a number in between a compound. If you put a number, it has to go in front of the compound. So if we put a 2 here, because whatever we put is going to multiply 
by the number that we already have, and we want to get to 2. So 2 here, it affects both sodium and chlorine. So it's almost as if we have parentheses around here, and in math you would distribute this 2 to the things that are inside the parentheses. And that's what we're doing here. So at that point we change this sodium to 2, and we change this chlorine to 2. So if you look right now, we have chlorine is balanced at 2. Now beryllium is happy the way it is. It's at 1 on each side. But fluorine needs some help. Fluorine has 2 on the left side, but only 1 on the right side. So we're going to put this 2 in here, because 2 times 1 is going to give us 2. And it's like it's being distributed across the full compound, so Na and F. So Na now becomes 2, and fluorine now becomes 2. Now if you take a look at everything across the board here, sodiums are balanced, chlorines are balanced, beryllium's are balanced, and fluorines are balanced. At this point, we are perfectly fine. There doesn't need to be a number here, and there doesn't need to be a number here. There are some extra practice quizzes and things like that that you can go to. Um, some of those links are here, and I will add some of those links onto our Google Docs sheet as well. So if you're listening to this, then you can go back to that Google Docs sheet, and you can look. There will be some extra websites there to help practice. So here's some practice problems. I would suggest going through and trying. Um, FeCl3, and this is supposed to be a subscript. My um, PowerPoint has changed them away from subscripts when I remodified this. So all of these numbers that are here currently are subscripts. And what you want to do is pull all of these out and try to practice balancing. Now in class we are going to practice quite a bit. Um, and we will have plenty of worksheets that we're going to practice with as well. Here's the solutions for those problems that were on the past slide. So once you have practiced these, you can come back and check the work. And um, I will do a whole nother little video to show a few of these as practice as well. And that'll be linked up to the um, PowerPoint or to the Google Docs form as well.